بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Sometimes we're in need of water for istinja or for making wudu when it's time for prayer but we don't have it so what should the believer do? We've already discussed in our durus uh, on basic fiqh what to do when we need to make istinja that we make istijmar and that it should be on witr it should be at least three stones for example if you need to use the restroom and you need to clean your, clean yourself then you make istijmar you use three stones at a minimum whatever it takes to remove the najasa and but what about if we have no water and it's time for prayer and we don't have wudu so then it's legislated for us to make tayammum so in this dars here in basic fiqh we're going to talk a little bit mention some ahadith or a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ regarding tayammum, regarding using pure earth uh, in order to prepare for the prayer. And it lets us know that the earth is, is, uh, is tuhur. First, in looking at it, the ulama, the fuqaha, especially the, those, the scholars in fiqh, they define tayammum as wiping the face and the hands with clean earth, with clean pure earth. And this is under the situation when there is no water, when water is not available or you only have a little bit of water, what is not sufficient for you to cleanse yourself with or perhaps you only have enough just to drink it's your drinking water or whatever the situation may be where you have no access to water or little water or perhaps you find there's harm in using the water this is another situation when tayammum is legislated for example the person who has injuries which is mentioned in the authentic hadith of the prophet sallallahu where one of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he uh, it came time for salat and he had many injuries from jihad from the battle, from the Ma'araka, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the other companions with him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, they said, hey, you need to make wudu. So they forced him to make wudu with water, and due to his, 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 uh, his injuries, he could not use water, and it killed him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, you killed your companion, alayhi salatu wasalam, letting us know that it is legislated for uh, to use to make tayammum when it is uh, dangerous or lethal or harmful to use water. Water, and sometimes you may not be able to clean yourself with water because it may uh, increase your sickness or increase your uh, your injury or cause infection or what have you. An Imran ibn Hussein. عن إمران بن حسين رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى رجلا معتزلا لم يسلف القوم فقال يا فلان ما معك أن يسلف القوم فقال يا رسول الله أصبتني جنابة ولا ما فقال عليك بسعيد فإنه يكفيك رواه مسلم in this hadith رواه بخاري in this hadith that was uh, collected in Sahih Bukhari. The hadith of Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a man who was, who was in the masjid, but he wasn't praying with the people, with the jama'ah. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, to this man, he said, O oh, Fulan, you know, what prohibited you from from praying with the people or praying with the jama'ah? And the man said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have janaba. 
you know, meaning I have sexual impurities. It could have been for whatever the thing, but he needed to make ghusl. It was mishru for him to make ghusl. He needed to make ghusl. He could not just simply make wudu because he had sexual impurities upon him. Akramakum Allah. Asabtini janabu wala ma. So I, I'm junub and I don't have any water. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Alayka bi sa'id fa innu yakfik. He said, it's upon you to use sa'id, to use clean earth. Because that's sufficient. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So many benefits from this hadith. And we'll try to be uh, brief. One of the things the ulama mentioned from this hadith A very important thing is it lets us know that tayammum also takes the place of ghusl, not just wudu, but ghusl. The major impurities if you don't have water. If you don't have water, you, you still need to make, uh, and you can't make ghusl, you don't have water. Tayammum is mishroor. So it takes the place, and we learn that from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alayka bi Sa'id, fa'innu hu yakfik, because verily that's sufficient for you. So, I don't know if there's any differences or anyone says other than this, but this is a nas sarih. This is very clear evidence from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, related to this issue. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Another benefit of this hadith is that tayammum cannot be made unless you do not have water or as we mentioned before that, that is, there's or there's going to be harm from using water or there is uh, as we mentioned before maybe you don't have enough water you need water for drinking and uh, you only have enough just for drinking water so under these situations tayammum is legislated another benefit of this hadith is a very beautiful benefit that the ulama mentioned. Sheikh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, may Allah bless him with Jannah to Firdaus for his excellent, incredibly important book which is studied at least all over Saudi Arabia. This book is, is studied by how many thousands of students of knowledge benefit from his explanation. And may Allah bless him with Jannah to Firdaus. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. He said... From this hadith, he said that it is not permissible or not befitting for whoever sees, uh, for a person who sees another person who is falling short in their deeds to quickly rush with force and intensity to blame them or chastise them until they have made it clear to them the, the hukum that's incredibly important that shows you again lean rifq having gentleness that it is not la yanbagi for a person if you see someone because the Prophet wasallam saw this man can you imagine this is the message of Allah salatu wasalam. they're praying salat al jamaah and there's a man sitting there who's not praying. In the midst of the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, the Prophet والسلام, could have chastised him, could have just blasted him out. What are you doing? Why are you not praying? But he said, Ya Fulan, Ma Manaka, and to Salaf al Qom. What is prohibiting you from praying with the people? The Prophet والسلام, did it with gentleness and asked about his how. That's beautiful. A lot of times we make a hukum, we make a ruling, we make a judgment quickly on a person. And we don't even ask about what their state of affairs is. Make excuse for them. Make excuses for them. And ask them to clarify from them. So that way you're not just rushing to blast them out. That's what we gain from this hadith. This is what the ulama say. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, is it also shows us that it was permissible during the time of the Prophet ﷺ to have ijtihad. To have ijtihad in a, in a mas'ala, meaning the Prophet ﷺ might not have been there, so the person had to still practice Islam. They still had to practice and operate and function. 
So they made ijtihad. So this is the leal, as the Sheikh says, Jawaz al ijtihad fi masail al ilm bi hadrat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam during his time that they made ijtihad when they didn't know about uh, something. So he had ijtihad and that this particular Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, he thought that he, that because he was, he was junub, that he, he didn't have to pray until he could find water. So this was from his ijtihad. And this is what he thought. And he thought that the ayats of tayammum, as the Sheikh says, the ayats of tayammum were in reference to, uh, to, uh, to the minor hadith, to, for example, if you, for wudu bas. That was his rai, that's what he thought. And that was his ijtihad. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. May Allah uh, have mercy and, and be pleased with all the sahaba. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Those are just some of the benefits that we gain from this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty for everything good and to accept our good and forgive us of, of our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah bless us with ilm nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amalim muttaqabbinan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.